My name is Ali Shantz. I'm one of the co-coordinators. I uh, know we have a couple of our county council members here. Uh, raise your hand if you're on the Napa County Green Party County Council. So that's Amy Martinson and Chris Malin. Um, Chris Malin's our treasurer, and uh, Amy is uh, the, uh, co one of the other co-coordinators with me. So uh, if you have questions about the party or you want to get more involved, you can talk to any of us. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about what the Napa County Green Party has been doing locally. Um, so several you know, key things that are worth mentioning. I guess first and foremost, what we're really trying to do is to start getting Greens involved in local government. And that starts on a really basic commission level. So it's about getting Greens appointed to local um, county and city commissions and committees. And we have several Greens. Um, um, Mark Lucas is chair of the City of Napa Parks and Rec Advisory Commission. Um, I myself serve as um, the at-large representative on the Gaming and Youth Violence Commission. Um, Elizabeth Schuyler is on the um, Napa County Local Food Advisory Council. Um, Chris Sawyer is chair of the City of Napa Tree Advisory Commission. Um, I also was recently elected student trustee, and uh, student trustee before me, Russell Kiyanyan, was also a Green. So for two um, terms in a row, uh, the students have elected Greens to the position of student trustee. So, you know, those might seem like small victories in the scheme of things, but, you know, that's where you, uh, that's, that's where you start getting Greens, you know, moved into to the pipeline. And, you know, it's not a huge jump to go from a commission to a school board seat. It's not a huge jump to go from school board to city council. And it's not a huge jump to go from city council to board of supervisors. And, Frankly, from, from there, it's not a huge jump from Board of Supervisors to, to State Assembly. So that's kind of, you know, the grassroots strategy. That's what we're trying to do locally. And, you know, we're, when we get into those positions, we're able to show people that when Greens are in government, we can govern, we can govern well, we can govern, govern incredibly. And our policies, you know, that are based upon our Green principles really do work. So that's sort of the one thing. Um, a couple of issues that we've been getting involved with is the National Kind of Green Party um, supported um, or is supporting legal GMO's efforts to get the um, city, not the city council and the board of supervisors to adopt res resolutions calling for the labeling of genetically engineered foods. Um, they've taken that resolution to the Napa County Local Food Advisory Council and they formed a subcommittee, which I believe they're going to be recommending um, a resolution to the Local Food Advisory Council. From there, it'll be much easier to convince these other governing bodies to. To do that. So that's an effort that we're supporting and it's being led by um, Label GMO in Napa County. Um, and that's another issue that Amy Martinson is very passionate about. Um, a couple of Greens, or I should say more than a couple of Greens, um, a handful of Greens really um, got involved with this latest issue that I'm sure most of you heard about, um, the medical marijuana dispensary um, ordinance referendum. As I think most of the locals here know, the city of Napa um, adopted a, an ordinance um, that would regulate medical marijuana dispensaries. And uh, you know, it, was a, it was a long process, took several years. The city put up thousands of dollars into developing this thing. And you know, when all was said and done, they decided to repeal it. And you know, really gave into overstated fears of, um, overstated in many of our views of legal retaliation. And you know, that if we have a medical marijuana dispensary, all of a sudden marijuana is going to become Available to youth, so you know a lot of scare tactics and um, a number of citizens got together and um, initiated this referendum, and we needed 3,800 signatures. Got about um, over 5,000 just submitted those petitions, and you know that was a diverse um, um, alliance and coalition of different citizens. But uh, uh, several Greens are really active in that process, so that's something. And we also did. Um, support the resolution in support of the ordinance. So that's something I definitely wanted to mention. Um, so yeah, um, I guess the last thing I'll pitch, I'll kind of put out there, and then I'll introduce the candidates. Um, it's really important if you believe that the voters of California should have choices. It's really important to register Green to help build that political alternative. All the smaller parties, including the Green Party, are really. Um, fighting and struggling for our very existence, and this is due largely to Prop 14. What Prop 14 did, and I'm sure when our candidates speak, they'll explain some of the hardships that they've been facing as independent small party candidates trying to get on the ballot. What Prop 14 did is it established a top two primary system. Um, it used to be that you would vote for candidates in your own party's primary, and it was a way for political parties to decide which 
candidates really represented them and their values. What Prop 14 did is it created an open primary. So it's the top two vote givers in the primaries that get to move on to the general election, and it's everyone is able to vote. So what that basically effectively means is you know big money, um, corporate funded candidates from both Republican and the uh, Democratic parties, you know they're the ones that are going to be moving on. Um, hopefully, Luis Enriquez will show them something different. But I mean that's you know the political reality that that we're dealing with. So that that limits voter choices, and in some races, voters only had two Democrats or two Republicans. To vote, to vote for. Um, and the impact that has on us as, as political parties is it eliminates one of the ways that we historically were able to stay on the ballot. Um, there, there's two main ways. Basically, if your party gets 2% of the vote um, for um, um, a constitutional state office race, that was a way for your candidate to stay on the ballot. And that's something that Greens have consistently been able to do since we first got ballot status um, over a decade ago, and since it's the top two vote-getters that get to move on, that eliminates our option for being on the general election ballot. So the only thing we, well, yeah, the only thing we really have left is to make sure that our um, party registration numbers stay up to a certain point. So um, if you believe that voters should have choices, and if you support making a, a, a green, giving the voters a green, strong green presence on the ballot, then I really encourage you to think about registering green. We have voter registration forms there. Um, so and if you have questions, obviously you can come talk to us. And I think we have that. The, I guess I, before mentioning the candidates, um, we are trying to get volunteers to sign up our, our volunteer sheet. Basically, that's to help us with our signature gathering drive. After this event's over, we're really going to um, kickstart our efforts to get signatures for our candidates so they can be on the ballot. And then uh, we also have these great useful bags. Um, Three to five dollar donations. So if you want to donate to the party and get a really cool, useful bag that you can shop with, um, we have that available as well. So uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, with that said, I'm going to introduce uh, David Curtis. 